Hey, how's it going everyone? So for today, I'm just gonna show you something real quick. We're gonna hand pack uh, wheel bearings. So what I'm working on today is I'm working on my 73 Sherwood tent trailer. So this is uh, supposed to be an annual uh, thing you do maintenance for a trailer. Um, haven't done it in a while. Uh, we ended up putting new tires on the trailer and looking at the date codes on the tire, they were dated for 2006. It's probably the last time this was done. So what we're gonna do is just hand pack the wheel bearings uh, to give them a little bit longer life and just do basic maintenance to the trailer. Uh, so tool wise, you don't need a whole ton. We're just gonna need a couple pliers and hand tools, uh, a chisel, but this is just mainly to get the cap off if you don't have a um, bearing cap remover, and then a couple hammers, one for the chisel and then one for uh, a non-marring hammer so that we don't uh, damage uh, if we have to put races in and we don't damage the cap or the the back seal so parts wise we just need a thing of grease um, so this is high temp uh, wheel bearing grease some brake clean and then a new cotter pin um, that's all you know as long as the bearings inside of our hub are okay it spins freely and we really hadn't had any issues so this is just going to be a maintenance thing so it shouldn't be that big of a deal uh, so our first step we're going to do is we're going to remove our cap right here all right so our first step already took the liberty taking the wheel and tire off of it. Uh, we're going to take off this dust cap. Uh, there are special tools that grip and pinch either side and these can come off but you can very easily use a chisel. You don't need to go you know real real hard on this. It's, it's kind of light and it's just held in with a light interference fit. So we're just going to lightly tap around until we get a gap like that on all sides. We just pop the cap off like that. Now I like to leave everything in order on a rag. So we're gonna start by pulling the cap off and leaving that in order. Uh, our next step is we probably need to wipe off any old grease so that we can gain access to the cotter pin, uh, which is right here. And a lot of times you may need to cut them and a, a good set of side cutters will do that. So we'll use the pliers to take the cotter pin out. These are not reusable, so this does need to be thrown away, and that's really the only part you need to get for this job. The next thing we're left with is our hub nut. Now these aren't on terribly tight. Uh, this is a tapered wheel bearing set. Bearings on this trailer, as with most trailers, are both the same exact diameter. Still wanna to try to keep them in order because they have seated to the outer races that are in the hub and they've worn into themselves. So we wanna make sure they're, they're kept in order. But because they're tapered wheel bearings, there's not a tremendous amount of torque holding these hub nuts on. So we just have to loosen that up just a small amount and we'll be able to get that off. We're going to hold the hub nut to the side for a second because we are gonna use it in another step here. Uh, but our next two components are gonna come out if we move the hub a little bit is we're going to have our outer bearing and our washer that's going to seat against this inner race. And that is uh, keyed to a keyway uh, in the middle of the spindle on this axle. So we'll put these in order on how they came off. Now, if we were to pull this hub out, we would end up you know, with the seal and with the inner bearing and we'd have to pry this seal off. Now, this is an older trailer, parts are a little bit harder to get for it. And if this isn't leaking, and this isn't really leaking, this is just kind of sweating, we can try to reuse the seal. And the way we can do that without damaging it um, during removal is we can take the hub nut and thread it on a couple turns. I usually like to do it right to where it's the end of the spindle. And then you just grab the hub like this and you pull, and then you'll be left with the bearing and the seal on the hub. Just like that. So we'll pull that off and uh, now we can go through and uh, clean and inspect everything. All right, so we've gone through, cleaned these all up. The only the way we cleaned them up was uh, we just used some brake clean with a little nozzle end and uh, sprayed these out. Um, they, they don't need a ton. Uh, at this point we go through and inspect them. So we're gonna inspect all the rollers, make sure there's no nicks. The other thing we wanna look for is if there's any uh, dark coloration or if they've gotten too hot. These all, these bearings had plenty of grease in them um, and there was really kind of nothing that was uh, out of the ordinary. We're gonna look at the inner bearing races, which might be kind of tough for you guys to see. They were a little, they are a little dark. More than likely that's because there was a bit too much preload on these. These were kind of a little bit tough to turn. 
the coloring on the races though on these outer races is equal um, there's no pitting there's no brunelling it doesn't look like there's anything flaking off so more than likely they're going to be all right i would not be surprised i mean this trailer is a 73 i uh, wouldn't be surprised if these were the original bearings um, for this trailer uh, so our next step is is we're going to hand pack the wheel bearings and that's why I've uh, put some gloves so on. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get some grease, uh, this is high temp wheel bearing grease and uh, you're gonna put it in your non-dominant hand. Then you're gonna take the bearing and with the tapered end, the narrower taper end towards you and the bigger end towards the bottom, you're gonna take the bearing and you're gonna drag it into the grease. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to get that grease to come and flow through around the outside of the races or sorry around the outside of the rollers i should say against the inner race and that will allow for grease to completely cover those rollers and you're just going to go around in a circle and do that until all the bearing races are packed it's really not that big of a deal you're going to do it this way you don't want to just like mash grease on there you need to actually get grease behind the back of the rollers that way the bearing lives a long life. Like I said, these are probably the original bearings from 1973. Um, and because you know they've had some decent maintenance, they've been able to live a long life. But we're just gonna go through and make sure that all the grease is packed around there and that the bearings are uh, very well, well greased up. Um, it is important to make sure we kept everything in order. So this is our rear bearing. So I'll just drop this straight down into the hub assembly. We can then put the seal back on and we can pack the next bearing uh, right after that and then we can set everything else up. All right, so at this point, we're going to uh, install our dust shield. Uh, we're just gonna put it in. A lot of times you can put these in by hand and you can use a light rubber mallet just to tap these into place. Typically the seal just needs to be flush with the, uh, the end of the housing. So from here we can install the hub onto the spindle end of the axle and we're just going to put that all the way down. We're then going to take our inner bearing, or sorry, our outer bearing because our inner bearing is inside the hub and place that inside again with the taper going towards the middle. Place that and again we're going to have a little bit of excess of grease. We'll then put our washer and that washer has to line up with a groove on this particular application and then we can put on our nut. Now we're going to set the bearing preload so we're going to thread this in all the way and we're going to use our channel locks and what we're going to do is while we turn the hub we're going to seat this down and we're going to seat it down and then back it off and then seat it down a couple times. And what that's doing is that's centering the tapered bearings on their races and allowing them to uh, seat where they need to seat. Um, now with preload on this, we don't want it too great. Again, we're using used bearings, so it's usually better to air towards being a little bit looser uh, because the clearances are there and we have a lot of grease. And one of the other things that can be somewhat difficult is this, ha this crown nut has fairly big lugs on it and those can block where the cotter pin goes so you kind of need to adjust on whether or not you're going to be a little bit tight to get the cotter pin or a little bit loose it's probably better to be a little bit loose um, in the sense that as long as there's some preload on the bearings they'll live a pretty long life uh, you can very easily over preload these and have the bearings burn up um, so what we're going to do is is i am going to use the new cotter pin to try to just judge on where we need to be all right and we can get our cotter pin in and again it's important to remember new cotter pin. You have to use a new cotter pin every time you do this. So what we're gonna do is we are going to turn this over and this will prevent us from coming, uh, from the axle nut coming loose. Uh, we also too may need to cut the end off so that it can fit the inside of the hub. So we'll just use a side cutter and cut these ends off. From there, you just do one final check uh, before you pop the dust cap on, make sure everything's turning nice and smooth. We can install our dust cap and we're just gonna tap it on lightly. Don't have to go ham on this, you just gotta do a little bit um, and make sure that it's all nice and sealed. 
and that we are uh, nice and clean. So from here, we'll just clean off the rust off of our hub face, uh, and then we can install our wheel and tire and uh, torque it to specifications. Thankfully, this being an older trailer, uh, we're able to have the specifications on the door and it's uh, 75 to 100 foot pounds. We'll probably go in the middle, about 85 foot pounds is what we'll torque this wheels, th these wheels to. All right, so from there we're all wrapped up. We got both sides packed. Uh, the wheels and tires are backed and snugged up. We'll do a final torque with it on the ground um, and bring it down off the jack stand. Uh, and it should be ready to go for another year. And I uh, hopefully will be doing it within the next year or so. We'll see, probably gonna be another 15 years again. Uh, I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch the video and I will see you in the next one.